Praise God. Thank you, Lord. If you have your Bibles, and you should have your Bibles, join me in the book of Galatians. Galatians chapter 5. Verse 22. If you don't have a Bible, it's okay. We can use the board up there. If you don't have a Bible, it's okay. We can use the board. Praise God. Galatians 22, 23. Five, Galatians 5, verse 22, 23. This is a familiar passage for many. Verse 22 reads, But the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, Peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. Against such things, there is no law. The word of God is already blessed. Please join me in prayer. Every eye closed, every head bowed. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you for this day. We thank you for watching over us. We thank you for protecting us. We thank you for just giving us one more opportunity to sit in your presence, to receive your instruction, to receive your wisdom, to receive your truth that we can apply it to our lives, Father God, and benefit from having possession of your precious word. Lord, we ask you right now if there's anything unlike you in our lives, expose it, reveal it, and remove it. Forgive us for any unconfessed sin. Forgive us for sin of omission, commission, poor disposition. Forgive us for our ignorance in the ways that we walked, that we were unsure of, that we didn't know, Father God. Lord, we ask you right now, give us a clean slate with you, Lord, so that we can benefit from being found spotless and blameless in your eyes through to the washing power of the blood of Jesus, the cleansing power of the blood of Jesus, God. Now we pray you open our eyes and we behold the wondrous things within your law. Open our ears so that we can hear what the Spirit of the Lord is saying. Open our heart so that the seed of the word that is sown today find good ground, gets rooted, blossoms, produces fruit unto righteousness, that those who see the fruit will recognize your impact in our lives and desire to be changed. Now hide me behind the cross and speak through lips of clay. Let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in your sight. These things we pray in the matchless name of our Lord, Savior, Redeemer, and Friend. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 Galatians 5, 22, 23. The passage that talks about the fruits of the Spirit, the fruits of the Spirit, basically the characteristics of Christ that should be evident in our lives, fruits that we should be able to identify in each other that allow us to know when we're walking and growing and maturing as believers. It's called the fruit of the Spirit. Mm -hmm. If I had to give you an objective today, the objective would be to awaken the hearer to the importance and necessity of all the fruits of the Spirit and those fruits flourishing and functioning in their lives. All the fruits of the Spirit. Mm -hmm. A lot of times as Christians and as people, we focus on the good fruits. Right. Everybody wants to be loved. You're supposed to be the church. You're supposed to love everybody. Mm -hmm. Love, you know, and, and, and peace. Oh, you guys are supposed to be peaceful, you know. Kumbaya, my Lord. Like, that's, that's, that's the image that, that you know, that um, social engineering paints of the church. A loving people, a peaceful people, even joy and gentleness and goodness and, of course, faith. Those are all the fruits that everybody expects. Those are the things that we all focus on as Christians. Like, I got to be good. I got to show love. Even I, 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 I got to do this. I got to do that. That's what everyone focuses on. And that's, in turn, what a lot of people desire when they come to the church. I don't feel like anybody loves me. I'm so sad. Everyone is so harsh. If I go to the church, they'll embrace me. And it's cool. We're known, the tree is known by the fruit it bears. The church should be known for those things. But some of the fruits of the Spirit have gone almost unnoticed, forgotten, cast aside. Like, they're not just as important as peace, joy, and gentleness. And these are the fruits that we're going to focus on this morning, right? Fruits. So, if I was to ask you what's your favorite fruit to eat, 
I know one person in here will say a banana, even though they ain't got no business eating bananas. And then other people, <laughs> but other people, you know, some people might say an apple. Some people might say grapes. Some of my, my, my favorite fruits, um, I, I love cherries and I love pineapples. Yes. I, like, so I think everyone has a different, everyone has different foods in general that they equally enjoy, but everyone has different fruits. But I think we can all agree that when it comes to fruits in general, that they're all pretty much good for you. Yeah. They're all healthy for you. Like, you can't go wrong unless you're a certain person eating a banana. You know, you can't, I mean, if you have food allergies or watermelons or strawberries, what have you, that's the only way you can really go wrong. But there's nutritional values in all of those fruits. I mean, and, and here's, um, here's, you may not typically crave certain fruits, but certain fruits still are good for you. Y'all right. stick with me for a second, right. because we're talking about the fruits of the spirit, but I'm gonna take what we know naturally, and I'm gonna push you into the supernatural with this teaching. Um, when I got older and really became like a, I don't wanna call myself a health junkie, because I had Chick-fil-A and Burger King this week. Two cheat days. So I wanna call myself a health junkie. <laughs> Two cheat days. But, um, but, um, but um, I do try to monitor my um, nutritional intake because I want to live. I want to live long. I want to. I want to be strong for my family, for my friends, for my community, but most importantly for God. I want to be the very best version of myself for God. And as I begin this journey for physical health, I started to learn about a lot of fruits that I was oblivious of right. were good for me. Yeah. Goji berries. What's a goji yeah. berry? Uh -huh. hey, go goji berry. Yeah. Um, um, I, 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 I'm a big I'm, and, and like goji berries. You gotta you gotta go out of your way to get them. Let me talk about some fruits, natural fruits. I, like I said, I love pineapple. Unless you go into the store, the supermarket, and get processed pineapple, it's hard work to get to the fruit of the pineapple. You gotta skin it, you gotta get, I love, I love kiwi. Kiwi will be a mess if you can't skin it right. You just make a, you'll make a mess. What else, what, what other, what, I, oh, 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 one of my favorites, and y'all don't gotta go there with me, mangoes. Anybody like a good mango? Yes. Don't you hate trying to get it though? Like, I, I, I look at a mango every time in the supermarket and be like, man, I sure would love a mango. And I'm like, ain't nobody got time for that. <laughs> and then, 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 uh, you want it, but you, you don't want to work for it. Y'all with me so far? Just like that, there are certain fruits in the spirit that are good for us that I'm going to give you, I'm going to work so that you can get a desire for it. But I want you to understand these same fruits, you don't have to work for them to get it. We lucky somebody climb the tree and get the bananas for us. Somebody go get the apples for us. We just go to the supermarket and buy a bag of grapes. I remember my mom when we were growing up, she took us out in Jersey, out like you go into the shore, and there's blueberry fields all in that area. And my mom would have us out there um, picking blueberries. It don't, it don't sound like nothing. It's a lot of work, man. It be hot out there. The, 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 um, the environment that blueberries grows in is not sweet. It's sandy, it'll mess your feet up if you don't have the right shoes on. Or now you know I've been there, right? He's like, pass us, pick your blueberries, chill. But, uh, <laughs> chill. but the reality is, if you want if you want that fruit, you gotta go to where it's available. Oh, let me get here. Let me get here. So just like we have natural fruits that we desire, there are some spiritual fruits that we desire. And what's more important is that some of us become malnutrition because we don't have a balanced diet of the fruits of the Spirit in our lives. We all love, 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 and we miss it out on some of these other ones. You ever meet somebody that's always, I, I, I don't want to step on nobody's toes, but that's kind of what I do. I guess I must have big feet because I just step on people's toes all the time. Um, like, like, you know what I mean? You know? <laughs> yeah, so you know, it's like, you know, some people, you know, you always got love, but you don't have any long suffering. Uh-oh. You don't have no patience. You always running around joy, but so you're, 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 you're malnourished because you don't have all the fruits of the spirit. And here's the, here's the deal, I'm a little ahead of myself. When people see one thing lacking, that may be the one thing they need to turn them off from the whole tree. One bad apple, spoils the bunch. Spoils the, you ever go to the supermarket and buy strawberries? You pick that plastic container up? And you look around it, and you see that little bit of mold, up, oh, you just put the whole thing down, right? right. One little bit, of, oh, y'all act like y'all ain't never bought strawberries before. Okay, <laughs> it's all right, but it's the truth. The, and the other strawberries may not be bad. 
But they are, because you saw that little bit of mold in there. The whole thing is disqualified. It's a lack of all the fruits of the Spirit or some of these forgotten fruits that sometimes allows the unbeliever to disqualify the kingdom as a viable option for their life. And the, and the kingdom, let me make it clear, is not a viable option. It really is the only option. It really is the only option. So let's talk about the three forgotten fruits. I want to just talk about these three forgotten fruits. Meekness. Y'all write it down. These are the three forgotten fruits. I'm going to break these three down. And wait till y'all see what y'all missing out on when you don't have these in your spiritual diet. Meekness, temperance, and long-suffering. I know y'all like, and he's smiling about it, said it right with that guy, smiling about long suffering, meekness, temperance, and long suffering. Now, when you think about your life and you think about church, how many of y'all even know what meekness really is? Forgotten fruit. Who knows what temperance really is? Y'all might have an idea. Forgotten fruit. Y'all can figure long suffering out just by what it says. Ain't nobody trying to eat that. <laughs> Ain't nobody trying to suffer. Nobody wants short suffering, let alone long suffering. Okay. Forgotten fruit. But Galatians 5 says all of these are necessary. Let's talk about meekness. Meekness means to be humbly patient, docile as under provocation. That word provocation means to be provoked. So when you exercise humility under the theory of meekness, it's provoked humility. In the case of the believer, the, promote humili the, the provoker is God. Humbling yourself so that God can get the glory. Humbling yourself, humbling your pride, humbling your ego so that no one sees you, they just see a question mark. I just cussed you out, why didn't you cuss me back? I just did you wrong and you're not looking for revenge. Provoked by God's character and God's rule. I like to use this as my definition for meekness. It's a God-inspired humility. Meekness is a God-inspired humility. A God-inspired humility. It's that look before you leap humility. Look to God before you leap at the devil. Humility. Because the, the enemy is always at you like... He always at you like... Come on, I know I got one witness. I know I got one witness. I ain't gonna look at you. I know I got one witness. <laughs> But the enemy is always like, and you gotta be like, Jesus, yes. if you, you get her, because if you you know me, if you don't get her, I'm a get her. If you don't get her, I'm yes. you have to have a God-inspired humility yes. that asks the questions, if I do this, will God get the glory? How is God glorified in me smacking the taste out of your mouth? That's it. <laughs> How is God getting the glory out of me putting you in a headlock? Right. We had a situation here a, 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 about a month ago where there was some um, issue with someone in the community and they called me and I was on my way and as I was driving over here, I was getting my knife. I said, I gotta learn the camera. I said it, I was getting my knife. I was looking for something in the car. I got weapons in my car to defend myself, defend myself. I don't start fights, I'm finished them in the name of Jesus. But up to defend myself, I have some nice little Swing and get melees. Now everybody in the community know, you know, don't walk up on him when he's near his car. <laughs> but um, yeah. And as I was coming, I was like, I need to pray. I was like, because if I get out of here with the wrong intention, I mess up everything. As the leader, as the leader, how can I tell the people who follow me don't act like that? And here I am having a moment. You know, I'm thinking my wife, my son, they better be all right when I get there. That's how I'm thinking, oh, it's going to be problems, problems. They don't want no problems. Want no problems and kisses. And they just, I'm saved. I ain't perfect in the name of Jesus. I got bail money. 
Anyways. <laughs> but but I had to exercise some God-inspired humility because I recognized that I don't represent myself, but I represent the kingdom. So when I got here, by the time I got here, I, I mean, God had a conversation. I was like, and God was like, you got it? I was like, yeah, I'm getting out the car at the end. And he was like, you got it. I was like, yeah, you got it. And I mean, I was praying. I was like, all right, if you start acting up, I stuck some lightning bolts. I expect <laughs> y'all, y'all laughing. I'm so sick. I was like, all right, if you jump bad, I'm, I'm, I'm looking. It was cloudy. I was like, we got the right atmosphere. You just go some electricity right on the spot. Don't know. I'm, I'm your man. God fights for me, causes me to triumph. Seriously. But I had to humble myself and take myself out of the equation and trust God. And when I got here, wasn't even that. And by that time, everything was, you know, I had to do some counseling with the people and bring them back into their character. But because I was ready to be meek when I got out of the car, God was here. Matthew eleven twenty nine. you can just put it up there, y'all got a turn, you can write it down if you're taking notes. Matthew, Matthew eleven twenty nine talks about meekness. It, God, Jesus is saying, take my yoke upon you and learn of me, for I am meek and lowly in heart, and ye shall find rest unto your souls. Jesus was meek. Jesus was meek. Matthew 5, verse 5 says, blessed are the meek. I want to show you some, I'm going to give you some keys to why you need to embrace these forgotten fruits. Blessed are the meek, for they shall inherit the earth. So when you learn meekness, when you learn some God-inspired humility, you are promised an inheritance, right? That's what it says. You inherit the earth. Blessed are the meek. It doesn't say the woman. It doesn't say the man. It doesn't say the black. It doesn't say the white. It doesn't say the Hispanic. It says the meek. It says you're blessed if you're meek and you have an inheritance. Does everybody know what an inheritance is? An inheritance is something that you take or you receive um, by succession as being an heir. I, I, I just like how this thing starts to come together because as an heir, it means I'm entitled to something as royalty. So man, meekness is a part of who I am as a prince. Meekness is a part of who I am as a king. I have to, if I'm going to be a joint heir with Jesus, I have to have some kingly qualities. Meekness is one of the kingly qualities that qualifies me for an inheritance. The, the scripture says the meek shall inherit the earth. How can I inherit the earth? Well, Psalms 24 says the earth is the Lord's and the fullness thereof, the world of the day that dwells therein. So if the entire earth belongs to God and I am an heir of God, then I'm meek, so now I'm entitled to everything that my dad has. Y'all get that? Y'all understand that? I, I, the earth is the Lord's. I'm his son. I'm an heir to God. And all I got to do is exercise some God-inspired humility, and I have an inheritance of the earth. Y'all got to really understand that and really grab that because Satan wants you to forget that meekness exists. He doesn't want you to even believe that this fruit is necessary because he understands what meekness entitles you to. He wants you to get stuck in your pride, your vanity, your ego, your arrogance. He understands what those things can cost you because that's what cost him. That's what cost him. Satan had a position in heaven, but his pride, his ego, his vanity, his arrogance, he was puffed up. It cost him everything. Satan wasn't always Satan. <laughs> Satan was an angel. Satan was Lucifer. And he messed up. His pride. And so... Satan wants you to make the same mistake that he made. The devil knows that if you, rem if you remember the forgotten fruit known as meekness, and if you develop it, and if you grow it, then the world will yield to you. Satan has a little bit of dominion in the world right now. He got his little demons. I could get, I could really... I could really dig into it and really tell you about witchcraft and, and really tell you tell you about intimidation and, and, and really tell you about manipulation. But let me just say that Satan has dominion in the world with people and powers. But he understands that when we're meek and humble, then God will give us power over the enemy's power. Psalms 22 verse 26. You don't have to turn there. Just pull it up. The meat shall eat and be satisfied. 
They shall praise the Lord that seek him. Your heart shall live forever. So we see with meekness there is provision for the meek. We will eat and be satisfied. Psalms 25 verse 9. The meek he will guide in judgment. The meek will he teach his way. So not only will the meek have provision, but the meek will be instructed and taught. The reason why is because they have a God-inspired humility. They don't know it all. Mm -hmm. If you need somebody to know it all, you can't tell them nothing. They just think that they're wiser and they got every answer to everything, but yet their life shows evidence that they don't know dimly. Because they're proud. They have ego. They have forgotten the fruit of meekness. As long as you stay teachable, you'll be reachable. But the moment you know it all, right. mm. you're in trouble. Psalms 147 and 6. The Lord lift up the meek. He cast the wicked down to the ground. When you have no agenda or desire to make yourself great because you're humble, mm. that's when God exalts you. That's when God exalts you. So many, and, and, and this is a heavy one in the church because a lot of times you come to the church and people want to be in the front row. People want to be seen. People want to be heard. People have an agenda. People have their own ideals of what they want to accomplish. They come to the church to accomplish that. Right. No, it's when you come humble will God lift you up. Meekness. Mm. The next forgotten fruit we're going to talk about is temperance. Mm. Temperance. Everybody under the L needs a little bit of temperance. <laughs> temperance means moderation or self-restraint in action. Self-control. It also means moderation in the indulgence of natural appetites or passion. Temperance can be summed up as simply exercising discipline or self-control. Discipline, if you need a good definition for discipline, and you should write this one down because you will hear it all the time. Discipline is, there's two words, forced obedience. That's what discipline is. It's forced obedience. Forced obedience. You gotta be disciplined. You have to have self-control. You have to have self-control. Who are my young people? Young people, children, put your hands up. Young people, I wanna make sure y'all pay attention. Turn around, I want you to face me real quick. I need y'all to repeat after me, all right? Y'all ready? No. Okay, let me know when you're ready. You ready? You can put your hand down. I need your mouth, I don't need your hands. <laughs> are y'all ready? Young people need this. If young people can get it, then the old people can get it. Just repeat after me, right? You ready? Y'all gotta say it loud. You ready? Repeat after me. Self. Self. Control. Control. Self. Self. Control. Control. Self. Self. Control. Control. We all need self-control. Amen? Amen. Amen. We all need self-control. That's temperance. If you don't have any self, if you don't have any self-control, y'all y'all ready? If you're not controlling yourself, then who's controlling you? You have got to understand that you need to control yourself because if you're not controlling yourself, then you are allowing some other power to control you. Proverbs 25 and 28. He that hath no rule over his own spirit is like a city that is broken down without walls. If you don't have any control over yourself, anybody can run up on you and do whatever they want to you. They can influence you to lie. They can influence you to steal. They can influence you to cheat. They can influence you to do anything they want because you don't have any control over yourself. Right. So you just let everybody, you just, and then guess what? Once it's, once it's all comes down to the come down, you blame everybody else because you had no self-control. It's not their fault. It's your fault. You could have said no. You could have said I won't. You said I, you could refuse. Mm. Uh -oh. Uh -oh. No self-control. No self-control. People come to you, you always say yes. You always say I can. You always say I will. You always say okay. And the same people that make that use you and you exercise no self-control with. Y'all ready? It's going to be a gut shot. Then when you ask them to do something, they be like, no. 
Right. And you're mad because they have self-control and you do not. Uh. Uh. No, you're mad. Right. Mm-hmm. Oh, that's how you're going to do me? Yeah, I got self-control. Yeah. Thank you for the $500 you loaned me, though. Sorry your lights is off. Mm. Now nah, you can't borrow 20 bucks. Huh. That's, how, that's, how, that's how it be, too, right? right you right. do something big for somebody else, and then you need something small, and they be like, no. Mm. Yeah. That, now, 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 that's not cool, but it's still self-control. Right. They, they, they chose to you know, be the masters of their resources, their abilities, their decisions. Yeah, exercise some self-control. That ain't to me saying don't do nothing nice for people, but you have to know when to control yourself. Mm, right. Self-control. Don't be like a city that's broken down without walls. Titus, um, the book of Titus, verse 7 through 9, and I, I encourage every man, every man to grab hold of this scripture, highlight it, study it, and memorize it, because it talks about Titus 1, verse 7 through 9. It talks about the qualifications of a bishop. It's the same as the qualifications for a deacon. But the reality is, as heirs to God, as godly men, we should all be striving for this blueprint to have these characteristics working in our life. Because I don't want to be like my bishop. I want to be like the, the, the God that my bishop serves. You understand? I, I, I don't want to be like my... I love him to death. He, he's a great guy. I have nothing but good things to say. But at the end of the day, I understand that he is only the man that he is because of his desire to please God. So I, if any, I just want the, the desire to please God like he has a desire to please God. But Titus 1, starting with verse 7. For a bishop must be blameless as a steward of God. I like that right there. Blameless as a steward of God. That doesn't mean you're going to be without fault, but you should be without fault when it comes to the things of the kingdom. You know, you, you have to be blameless as a steward of God. That includes your character. A bishop is not self-willed, not soon angry, self-control, not given to too much wine, self-control, not a striker, doesn't hit people, self-control, not given to filthy lucre, can't be persuaded or seduced by money, self-control, but a lover of hospitality, of hospitality, a lover of good men, sober, just, holy, temperate. A man of God has to exercise self-control in a lot of areas, not self-will. I'm grown. I can do what I want to do. Huh. Not self-will, but having God as the motivating factor. About not soon to be angry. Get on my last nerve. Self-control. Got to be temperance. Temperance is necessary if we want to have an effective witness about our God. If you're always flying off the handle, what does that say? about your God. Like if we walk out of the church right now and we have no self-control, how will anybody be attracted to our God? Who's going to be attracted to people who are unruly? Who's going to be attracted to people who exercise no restraint? Who's going to be attracted to people who have no self-control? Right? You have, who, who, who wants that? If people come into the church and they see us fussing and fighting at each other's neck, if they walk around the corner and they see two members of the same church talking about three members from the same church and there's discord and confusion, who, we got that at home. We got that on TV. We got that at work. We, don't, we got that in the community. We don't need that in the church. Self-control. Even, um, even on Friday, we study that God gives the believer the Holy Spirit to witness effectively. But what type of witness will you have without temperance operating in your life? I want to give you guys a little bit of a boost right now. Every time you don't cuss when you want to cuss, that's fruit of the Spirit. Every time you don't drink when you would have drank, that's growth. That's fruit of the Spirit. Because guess what? Ain't nobody stopping you from going and picking up. Right. 
The same way you could have picked up a drug or a drink or a hit or a needle or a drum or a vowel or a paper or backwards, whatever, you can still do that now. But when you exercise self-control, that's temperance growing in you. That's fruit of the spirit growing in you. You shouldn't be encouraged. You may not have all the joy, but you got fruit. You may not have all the peace, but you got fruit. You need to value the fruit that you got and believe that the other fruit will come in time. Every time you go for that walk, that's fruit. Every time you bite your tongue, that's fruit. Every time you put your hand in your pocket when you want to put it around somebody's throat. <laughs> That's, that's temperance. Uh -huh. That's growth. Meekness. Mm. Don't forget that fruit. Temperance. Yeah. Don't forget yeah. that fruit. Here we go. Long suffering. Oh, man. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> Long <laughs> suffering. I don't need time for this. What I, had to witness. I say this one for last. Long suffering. Enduring hardship. Mm. Turmoil. Strife, persecution, or such, with patience, with patience, with patience. You know why long suffering has become a forgotten fruit? You know why? Let's go mess up my DVD. You know why we suck at long suffering? <laughs> we suck at long suffering. Because we live in a society that teaches us instant gratification. Yep, yep. People have, I'm, you can't even wait for popcorn nowadays. You just pop it in the microwave, 90 seconds, boom. Mm -hmm. um, we used to have a popcorn blower. You a little hot air spin around in the chamber until it get hot and then it start to come out the top. But before that, they put butter in a pan. Yep. And way back, I mean, they, I mean, you had to wait for that popcorn. You had to wait for that thing. Uh -huh. Remember Jimmy Popper used to be in the little, and, and then you'd have the aluminum foil thing pop yeah, and you're yeah. it. Then you had to work, you had to work, and you had to wait for it. But, but yeah, 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 but I mean, I mean, remember, remember, remember we go to the store now, we take things for granted. Yeah. I go to the store and I can buy a stick of butter, but there was a time when people had to churn the butter. Woo. Like, people had to churn the butter. Like, we go to the, you go to the store and you can just get anything you want. You don't even gotta go to the store, we lazy. I, 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 I'm, I'm growing up, man, my, 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 my stepdaddy taught me how to fish. I can go out to the river, I can catch some fish, I can clean some fish, I can bust some fish, I can season some fish, I can cook some fish. Now I just go to McDonald's and give me a fish sandwich. <laughs> and that fish sandwich don't taste like nothing. Don't taste like nothing. Not, not compared to the. I won't even brag because next thing y'all gonna be like, Pastor, when are you gonna make us some catfish nuggets? <laughs> yeah. <It'll taste> like <laughs> I told on myself. But anyway, it don't taste like nothing. But we done forgot that good things come to those who wait. Yes. We have completely forgot. And we've settled, man, listen, we've said we we we've settled for process instead of going through the process. We sell for processed food instead of going through the process. And now we get so convenient and comfortable with, uh, with processed church, processed ministry. You know, I like the kids, they're like, we like going to House of Triumph. They don't be in church all day. Amen. 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 Only during football season. No, I'm just kidding. But uh, <laughs> I'm just kidding. But, 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 but the reality is sometimes we have to go beyond what is comfortable and break away from the process. Because good things come to those who wait. And we got to be able to break free of this mindset that anything good I can get instantly. Right. Get rich quick schemes. I don't want to work. I'm just going to pay the lottery. Mm -hmm. Get rich quick schemes. Galatians 6 and 9 talks about long suffering. It said, Let, and, 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 and everything that I found that deals with long suffering was good. It says, let us not be weary in well doing. For in due season... You're going to reap if you think not. If you endure the weary season, then there a season of harvest is on your way. Um, endurance brings a harvest that you got to sow in tears, that you have to sacrifice, that you got to work through. See, we don't want to deal with the hardship, so we miss out on the harvest. Isaiah 40, verse 31. But they that wait on the Lord, again, waiting, long suffering, shall renew their strength. They shall mount up on wings like eagles. They shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and not faint. Endurance. 
brings refreshing. It brings new strength. But we don't want to wait. I want it now. I want it now. I want it now. Jesus, I gave my life to you 10 minutes ago. Why isn't my life better? Why didn't I get a raise on my job? Why didn't the house just fall out? Of if it was easy, everybody would do it. If it was easy, everybody would do it. You have to be willing to suffer long for some things that you really want. I, um, I have a friend, I have a couple of people I know they're doctors. Now, there is much value in education. I gotta say this the right way, I turn everybody off. There's much value in education. I am not against post-secondary education, going to you know college and, and seeking bachelor's degrees, master's degrees. I'm not against that, I'm an advocate for it. This is hard for me. I hated school. <laughs> I, 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 like, I did what I could do in school so I could play sports. Can I be honest? Yeah. Can I be honest? Then when I, like, and I, be, I tell people, I say, I don't know how you could agree to go to school for 12 years to get a doctorate. But the reality is they were willing to suffer long nights of writing papers and financial obligation and, give away, and, and giving up social activities because of the goal associated with the suffering. You guys got to understand that there is a goal associated with the suffering. You miss out on the goal that you want because you don't want to fight and you don't want to suffer for it. But when the suffering is over, it's worth everything you feel like you sacrificed and you endured. James 1, verse 12. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Put that thing together. James 1, verse 12. Blessed is the man that endureth temptation. Did you hear that? You're going to be tempted. Mm -hmm. Everybody's going to be tempted. Saved and unsaved. Being tempted is not the same. Are y'all okay with that? Right. You're going to be tempted. You, that's not the sin. You're going to see a man and he's going to look good. You're going to walk past somebody smoking out of me and be like, hmm. <laughs> you're going you, you, you to get thirsty right. for that drink. Right. You're going to be agitated to verbalize your emotions in a non-productive way. Y'all okay right now? You're gonna be tempted. Right. You're gonna be tempted. Every day we're counted as sheep to the slaughter. But when you endure temptation, when you resist temptation, when you fight against temptation, and you exercise that humility, that meekness, and that temperance, and look so long suffering, it says, blessed is the man that endureth temptation. For when he is tried, he shall receive the crown of life which the Lord has promised to them that love him. Mm -hmm. You gotta be willing to suffer long because you love your relationship with God. Endurance brings you victory. Mm -hmm. Endurance brings you victory. Yeah. Enduring the temptation brings you victory. I, 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 I love the fact that my wife is always here and like she knows the type of fella she's connected to. So I, I mean, I can just speak freely and I don't have to worry about it, but I have to speak freely so that people can really understand what this is doing. I, women don't care if I'm married or single. They don't care if I'm a pastor or a heathen. There are some women out there that just want what they want. I am approached, I am complimented, I am flirted with all the time. Temptation. And what keeps me from doing something that in the past I would have taken advantage of, can I be honest? Right, right. Because I haven't always been faithful. Right. I've been faithful to my wife. Huh? Back up. <laughs> 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 oh, let me clean that up. I've been faithful to my wife. Right. <laughs> we good. We good. Whew. Jesus, almost mess. I almost lost the whole church. The stream, the camera fell over, the roof came down. Jesus. But, um, but, those opportunities did not pass me by when I was not exercising meekness, when I was not exercising temperance, when I wasn't thinking about no fruits of the spirit. But what keeps me from falling into those same temptations now that used to trip me up then is the fact that I love my relationship with my God. Y'all thought I was going to say with my wife. With my God. Because if I mess up my relationship with him, that's going to fall apart anyway. He gave me her. He gave me her. So I do what I do because I want God to be pleased. Let me tell you something. I can get away with it. She never know. She never know. 
but God would know. Do you, do, do you understand that? She would know, and God would know, and I couldn't stand up here and do what I need to do. I'll be, I'll be like, it's hot in here. It'd be the middle of February. I'd be like, <laughs> what's wrong? Because my relationship with God is so valuable, that's what helps me to endure alone. Because I believe that God is going to come through. I believe that God is going to reward my temperance. God is going to reward my weakness, God, my, my meekness. God is going to reward everything I do and bring me to the place of victory. Amen. My marriage isn't great because I'm not tempted. My marriage is great because I trust God in whatever situation I find myself in. So when things fall apart for me in the world, they don't fall apart in my covenant. Right. When things go bad for me that are outside of my control, I still have a wife that loves me. I still have a group that supports me. And I still have God the Father on my side, which is more important than everything. So let me just recap these forgotten fruits for you guys, and then we'll get out of here. Meekness. Meekness brings you an inheritance. Meekness brings you wisdom. Meekness brings you provision. Meekness brings you elevation. Temperance. Temperance enables you to effectively witness. Effectively witness means you effectively live out God's commands. You have self-control. Temperance. You enforce, you force obedience in your life to do what you're told to do. I, I, I got to use strong words. You do what you're told to do, not what you want to do. And you have to understand that God is doing the telling. He's not going to tell you something that is going to hurt you. So you trust him. My son, trust me unequivocally. I could tell him to do anything and he will do it because he trusts me and he knows I'm not going to tell him to do anything foolish. He got to the point now, I don't even got to tell him. I said, boy. <laughs> <laughs> I would, I'm not that bad. Boy, come down here now. He came down and I just looked and he knew what to do. Uh -huh. He's like, oh, I left my empty cup on the couch. Let me go ahead and grab that before daddy goes nuts. He knew what to do because he knows I'm not going to tell him anything wrong. I'm not going to tell him anything bad. Right. Temperance. Forced obedience. And long suffering. Long suffering will give you new strength. If you've never been through something, and saw it through to the end, then you would never know how strong you really were. Mm. Sometimes you gotta go through something and live through the process yes. so that God can show you, you thought it was gonna kill you. Mm. You thought it was gonna destroy you. But you let me carry you through it and now look at you. Now look at you. And you better believe you're gonna bump into somebody in a couple of years or in a couple of weeks and they're gonna be in your shoes. Mm -hmm. They're going to be in your shoes and they ain't going to have the resolve that you have. They're not going to have the belief that you have. They're not going to have the faith that you have. But you're going to be able to help them because now you have the testimony that you have. And you're going to be able to say, hey, listen, I was I was homeless. Listen, because I, I was homeless. I was living in my car. And, I, and when I was in my 20s and I, and I had lost my place, I was still in electricity, had an uh, extension cord under, underneath my door going into the hallway. I was, I was there. Right. I'm not there no more. I didn't know what I was going to do. But God, he made a way. I was locked up. I was in prison. For possession. They're talking. For possession. They locked me up. Took out my gold teeth. Took off my gold chains. Took off my rings. Gave them to my boy who left the product in my car. I said, get these to my girl. I'm coming to get them. Then my friends and my girl came to get me out, and then they walked away, and I was still locked up. Mm. So, in the home cell, I was like, what part of the game is this? <laughs> what part of the game is this? Talk real. Had to suffer a little bit. Mm -hmm. Then the one person I didn't want to know found out and got me out. Called my mama. Mm -hmm. Didn't want that. Right. Didn't want that. But guess what? That was God's provision. <coughs> Needed a little humility in my life. I had to learn to trust God to get me out of jams and tight spots. And until we remember these forgotten fruits, you're not going to get the provision. You're not going to get the strength. You're not going to get the 
witness that you want. So don't forget those fruits. They are important. Joy is good. Peace is good. Love is great. But you're going to have to endure some things. Yeah. you got to understand that's a part of life. Mm. That's a part of life. But with God, you can endure it. You're going to have to fall back sometimes mm. and let God take the center stage and fight for you. Yeah. He better fight it than all of us anyway. Mm -hmm. Trust him. Amen. Remember the forget, forget, forgotten fruits. Yes. Remember these forgotten fruits. Let them grow in your life. Let them blossom in your life. Let them become real in your life. Practice them. Mm. Practice them. If you don't know what they look like, find somebody that you see is walking in self-control. Find yes. somebody that, yes. that does not respond the way that you will respond when your flesh flirt. Find somebody and ask them. Teach, get, be teachable. Learn from them so that you can benefit from those fruits in your life. I pray that y'all are blessed. Yes, thank you, Jesus. I pray that y'all are blessed. Thank you, Jesus. Yes, yes. Praise God.